So it's about 4 a.m. We're about to see some of the interesting sites we can find in Auckland. So currently an international lounging contest for the first time, it's quite enjoyable, while working on YouTube before we get onto the flight to New Zealand. The one thing I like about walking on Auckland is the fact that they've got the engineering on the outside of the building. As we can see with this lateral brace on the external face, more like a dye grid, so the engineering is being exposed. Not only does it allow a great feature for engineers to see how buildings are put together and braced, it adds a great stability for bracing because it resists those torsion moments as it's on the outer edge of the structure. It's also steel. The reason why they use steel in this situation is the fact that they're in a highly reactive place for earthquakes. So that means that the potentially of the damage is highly likely. So when they see that damage, they can just cut it out, repair it, and reinstall it after the event. So let's keep walking and see what other sites we can see within Auckland. So we can see out in behind it, an amazing example of a temporary structure, which they've only got there to support the facade of the structure behind it. So they've knocked down the building completely behind, to keep the facade to maintain the look. If we look at it closely, we can see there's a big cross brace all the way going from the top to the bottom with some stronger bracing in the other direction to brace it. So there's not much bracing left to right, as it's quite stable, as it's already got the juncture, the wall stabilizing in that direction, plus this front face. But in the other direction, there is nothing left. That's why they've got the bigger bracing in the other direction, where they've got the steel structures that are spliced together. As we're walking underneath this temporary structure, we can see that they've got temporary construction blocks here to help spread out the load so they don't damage the local area and to hold the building down. If we look here at the bottom connection, you can see that they've got a pin there to create a pure pin connection that's only applying for tension forces. While it's got a splice connection on there to tighten it up, as it's a rod cross bracing, they don't know exactly what the dimensions are going to be, so they can tighten it up as they need to. As I was saying, there's quite a lot of construction work going on throughout all of Auckland. See a perfect example here behind us, which is more of a sway frame. We can see that through the big columns and the reinforcement required to tie it down. We can see there's quite thick structure in here to create that sway frame because there can be quite high earthquake forces here in Auckland that need to be resisted. We can see, you can see right through the building, so there's no core in behind it. So it's been quite impressive, but it does require a lot of structure. We can see that from the reinforcement required at the top of the building and all the way through the size of the structure required to resist those actions. So we can see here at Auckland's Art Gallery, they've got quite an impressive facade in behind us. But they've got a huge canopy that's cantilevering a long way. How they've done this, although it looks like timber, they've actually got steel inserts in there. So the columns are steel and the main bracing of the structure is steel. And the timber is just cladding. If we have a closer look, we can see this. So we can see this from here. We can see the steel inserts in here with the timber cladding in between. So it's just really a bracing form. So we've got a T-section in here. Or it's really a cross that's doing the main bracing. Come, sits down on a bracket on the bottom there and transfers it to the footing structure. And that goes all the way to the top. So the steel's doing the majority of the work and the timber's just a cladding to make, to have it look. But it's probably just four cantilever beams going out in the cross sections in each direction. They tape it up to the top to create this thin profile. As we can see from the curvature of the junction. So it's got a thin beam that tapers from the bottom to the top to create the thin structure, cantilevering in four directions. to so create this impressive cantilever section. If we look at the structures behind us, both the ANZ and the PwC building, we can see the architecture expressing the engineering elements as well. And it's got the cross bracing on the outer edge. It provides a quite large bracing frame to stop the torsional forces and also the structural rocking of the building. As the forces are quite high, a lot of the time they're integrating the engineering elements with the architectural features, allowing you to see how the building is braced and where the loads are going. This is what makes it quite impressive about traveling through Auckland and looking at how the buildings are put together so you can see where the structural framing actually is, especially as an engineer. This brings us perfectly into the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. If you're just looking to start out learning a new skill, Skillshare is really the place to be. It has a wide variety of premium content. Skillshare has an amazing online community with thousand premium classes that is delivered to you ad free. Whether you're looking for that career move or just leveling up your skills, there's a variety of content there for you. For example, 
if you're looking to improve those communication skills, which is arguably one of your most important assets, or if you're looking for more harder skills, such as programming languages, or if you're just looking to move into the creative space, has a great variety of content. First, a thousand people to use the link in my description box, or the code Brendan Hasty 05221. We'll get a one month free trial on Skillshare. Hope to see you over there. Now let's get back to the content. So we have this unique bridge behind us that is both operable and a cable stay bridge at the same time. So it's both functional and practical in its design. So cable stay bridges are typically quite efficient as they're utilizing steel where it's most effective in its tension actions. Then using normally a slab or other formats to use those compression forces. As we can see behind us, the bridge operates by pulling up the cable. So the cable retracts, allowing the bridge to arch up, allowing boats to come through while still operating as a bridge most of the time when it's not needing to be in this form. As we can see, it's both functional and practical through the cable stays, allowing it to pull it up with minimal effort. So when you're looking at engineering structures, just don't focus on the things that you're typically designing, but maybe even look at other such things as bridges or other elements, as I will give you insight into how you can effectively do this as well. Another thing you might not think about is boats. Boats are also a perfect example of how cable stays work. As we can see, it's got big tension cables all the way up for the big forces from the wind that it needs to resist. So we can see where all the cables come down for those tension forces to help restrain the mast of the boat. And when you get to see construction sites like this, it's always good to look in to see how they framed it up, especially with the exposed structure and in steelwork, because you can see the connections where they've welded them, bolted them, what type of bolted connections they may have had. So we can see they've got a nice exposed surface that they haven't cladded up, so we can see all the way through the structure. Here, at one of the unique features in Auckland, is really an engineering masterpiece. The size of the tower that they've built under the conditions they need to design for. We can see that it's got big columns around the outside to help it achieve the height. It's essentially a spire. And it's also got a ring beam halfway up. So what that ring beam does, it allows them to spread the loads evenly between the columns in the case of a seismic event. See the columns taper up all the way at the top and they taper out at the bottom, meaning that you've got the biggest stiffness at the bottom of the tower where you need it. Where at the top, where it's not so critical, you can reduce the weight by bringing them in to create this unique pinching feature at the top of the tower. Also at the top of the tower, they extend it back out to support a rotating 360 orbit restaurant at the top. What a day. So I actually got to Sky Tower a little bit late, so it was actually closed before we got in there. So that is really an impressive feat of engineering. If you're interested in another feat of engineering, I've got a link to the video about Melbourne University, which has a unique car park that every engineer should have a look at. And if you're interested in supporting the channel further, I've got links to my Patreon in the below description. Much like these many members here, without their support or the support of my YouTube members, this type of content would not be possible. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.